Welcome to a Legendarium special about the history behind Beowulf. In this installment, Halls and Horrors, we will talk about the historical realities behind the Anglo-Saxon epic poem Beowulf. Beowulf is set in early medieval Denmark and Sweden around the 6th century AD. The story begins with King Hrothgar of the Danes, whose royal hall is attacked by a shadowy, fen-dwelling creature named Grendel. Hrothgar is in despair until a warrior named Beowulf of Geatland turns up to offer help in defeating the intruder. Lying in wait by night within the hall, Beowulf surprises Grendel, wrestling the monster and tearing off its arm with his bare hands. The wounded creature retreats, and everyone thinks the threat is over, but they celebrate too soon. Grendel's mother comes next, thirsting to avenge the dismemberment of her son, and this time Beowulf has to descend into her watery lair to fight her. After a vicious struggle, he manages another triumph. Beowulf returns home laden with rewards. He eventually becomes king of the Geats, but after many years he faces another threat, this time to his own tribe in the form of a dragon. Though now an old man, Beowulf succeeds in killing it, but in doing so, he is also slain. The poem ends with his funeral and the grief of his people at the loss of their great king. By the time that a scribe finally wrote down the poem around the year 1000 AD, it would have already been ancient to the Anglo-Saxons. Indeed, it would have hearkened back to times of yore, before their ancestors crossed the North Sea to settle in Roman Britannia, now called England. Yet lords continued to build great mead halls to serve as their power centers. There they could gather fighting men around them, throw great feasts, and give gifts to keep their men loyal. These mead halls included a single large room enclosed with timber walls, along with flagstone floors and a thatched roof. The safest place in any petty kingdom, it included hearths large enough to roast an ox in, along with treasure kept by the lord. To the early Germans, it was the best society had to offer. The Beowulf poet glowingly describes the idealized Hall of Heorot, perhaps foreshadowing King Arthur's court of Camelot. He writes, Heorot he named it, whose message had might in many a land. Not reckless of promise, the rings he dealt. Treasure at banquet, there towered the hall, high gabled wide, the hot surge waiting of furious flame. Indeed, some scholars believe that they have located a historical inspiration for Heorot in the old royal capital of Denmark, called Ligra, 23 miles west of modern Copenhagen. By studying the bones of hundreds of animals discovered at the site, the researchers put together King Hrothgar's menu. It included suckling pig, beef, mutton, goat meat, venison, duck, and fish. They also found fragments of glass drinking vessels, pottery from England and Rhineland, and 40 pieces of bronze, gold, and silver jewelry. This shows that despite the breakdown in international trades, goods could still move across the ocean between royal halls. Of course, if the meat hall is the best that the old Germanic world had to offer, then the wilderness offered the worst. In the time of Beowulf's composition, people tended not to venture far from their farms and villages. Early medieval Europe could be a dangerous place filled with migrating tribes and roving bandits. Perhaps because people associated the community with safety, their imaginations populated the outside world with goblins, demons, and beasts akin to Grendel. 
To them, the dense woodlands which covered most of old Europe were not just dark places a person could get lost in, but a realm of evil spirits. Indeed, their fear shows itself in the lake where Grendel's mother lives. It is no ordinary body of water, but teems with blood and gore, along with unsavory creatures of all descriptions. King Hrothgar describes it as... "'Tis no happy place. Thence the welter of waters washes up, one to welk and when winds bestir. Evil storms and air grows dusk and the heavens weep." Of course, but with the ancient Scandinavians and their English-born descendants thought of the likes of Grendel. The medieval imagination abounded with all manner of fantastic creatures, ascribing magical powers even to everyday animals, like wolves who supposedly hypnotized their prey, and bears who supposedly practiced healing magic. It remains unknown for certain if Grendel was a spiritual menace, like a demon, or perhaps a humanoid. When Beowulf tears off his arm, it is described as having skin like barbed steel. Most likely, Grendel may have been a Scandinavian giant, which translates as devourer. Rather than being of great size, these giants simply tried to bring chaos to the human world, which the ancient Germans saw as being clearly divided between the orderly world of the village and the chaotic realm of the wilderness. Beowulf also refers to a number of other legends and myths that circulated among the Germanic nations of the 6th century. Beowulf begins by telling the story of Skild Skeffing, a legendary ancestor of Danish and English kings. As a child, the Danes found him drifting alone in a boat, took him in, and he grew up to become a great king. Beowulf's name translates as Bear Wolf, a reference to totemic beliefs among the Germanic tribes. Their ruling houses took names like Wolfingus, or Wolves, and Hunglingus, or Hounds. When the Danes celebrated Beowulf's victory over Grendel, a poet at Hrothgar's court praised Beowulf by comparing him to another warrior named Sigamund. In a poem within the poem, he tells of how Sigamund killed a dragon which foreshadows Beowulf's final battle. The Beowulf poet wrote, Yet so it befell his falchion pierced, that wondrous worm on the wall it stuck. Best blade, the dragon died in its blood. Thus had the dread one by daring achieved over the ring horde to rule at will. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.